Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me for this week's Object Talk. My name is Emma and I'm the Engagement Officer at the Jewish Museum London. The object I have chosen to share with you this week is one of over 40,000 objects in the Jewish Museum London's designated collection. A collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and history. And our programmes exist to preserve the unique and diverse voices of Jewish communities and explore connections between faiths and cultures. The theme this month across the museum is hope and the object I have chosen is a wedding photograph. Weddings are a time of hope, a new start and a cause for celebration. However, this wedding photograph does not show a typical wedding, but instead one that took place at Bergen-Belsen in 1946. This month we mark Holocaust Memorial Day and our object talks have been exploring this topic, examining times when all hope was lost, looking at individuals who brought hope to others in difficult times and looking at the idea of the possibility of hope for the future after such horrific events. I find the contrast of a wedding photograph, a time so often filled with joy and hope and excitement, and the setting of Bergen-Belsen displaced persons camp, near the camp where over 50,000 people were murdered, to be quite startling when looking at this photograph. And so I have chosen to explore it more with you in this object talk. Let's turn our attention to the bride in this photograph. Her name is Toby Bieber. She was born in Poland in 1925, one of seven children from an Orthodox Jewish family. This photograph from our collection shows Toby as a child. She was born at Toby Trumpeter and is sat in the middle of the sleigh with two of her cousins. The older girl standing up is Toby's sister, Sarah. Sarah was murdered during the Holocaust. In this family photograph, they are all seen playing in the snow. It is a photo perhaps similar to ones that we may have in our own homes. Family photographs remembering going out on a snow day and having fun together. Whilst this photograph suggests a happy and a carefree childhood, the sisters and their family did experience anti-Semitism at this time, which the two sisters would have grown up experiencing. In 1942, the family were rounded up, their possessions confiscated, and they were taken to a forest where they were held for five days. Toby's father managed to get forged documents for Toby and her sister Sarah, allowing them to go into hiding. They would never see their parents again. They lived in hiding in Krakow until they were rounded up and taken to Plazau forced labour camp where they were forced to work in a shoe factory for long hours and in horrific conditions. Toby later described the camp as a Jewish cemetery, for so high was the number of Jewish people who were murdered there. In the summer of that year, Toby and Sarah were taken to Auschwitz, where Toby was made to work cleaning the barracks. Living conditions were appalling. Toby shared her barracks with 1,000 women and they were filthy. In the summer of 1943, the sisters, Toby and Sarah, were moved again, this time in cattle trucks from Auschwitz to Bergen-Belsen. She described the conditions in Bergen-Belsen as being much worse than those in Auschwitz. Bergen-Belsen was a starvation camp and the death rate for inmates was horrifically high. Toby and her sister Sarah were there for eight months before liberation. Alongside the collection of photographs donated to us by Toby Bieber, which includes the one we are looking at now. We also have photographs in our collection that were taken by liberating forces when they entered Bergen-Belsen. And I'm going to share one of those photographs with you now. 
This photograph shows a mass grave for 1,000 people who had been murdered there. We can see a date underneath um, the number 1,000 that reads the 22nd of April, 1945. This collection of photographs that we have documents the corpses that had been left unburied, showing the sheer number of people murdered at this camp, over 50,000. Toby's husband, Max, was one of the soldiers in the British Army who liberated the camp. We can see him here in the wedding photograph. He was Polish, like Toby, but was serving in the British Armed Forces. After liberation, Toby had been treated for typhus, which she was suffering from. She met Max Bieber and the two were married in 1946. So bringing me back to this photograph that we began with. I mentioned earlier that our theme for this month is hope and weddings are often a time of hope and of celebration. Here we have a second photograph showing the couple surrounded by friends on their wedding day. When we think of the liberation of camps, we also often think of hope, the idea of the end of the Holocaust and the start of a period of recovery and freedom. And yet this photograph makes us question this idea. First of all, because one important person is missing from this photograph, which is Sarah, Toby's older sister. As I mentioned earlier, Sarah, who we can see in this photograph from that happy snow day before the war. Sarah was murdered during the Holocaust. She died eight days after liberation. Whilst the camp had been liberated, Sarah and so many others had been subject to starvation and inhumane living conditions, in Sarah's case for eight months. After liberation, over 35,000 inmates of the camp died. That's 35,000 more than the over 50,000 people who were murdered before liberation. Her story shows that liberation was not an immediate end to suffering or even of death. Nor did liberation mean that people could immediately leave the camp and return to their former lives. Although this wedding took place a year after liberation, they are still at Bergen Balsam. The photograph is not taken in the camp itself. The camp barracks were burnt down by the liberating forces for hygiene reasons. However, the former inmates like Toby could not just leave and return to their former lives. What did they have to return to? As I mentioned near the start, all of her family's possessions had been taken away from them by the Nazis. At the point of liberation, she had no money, no possessions, and no idea what had happened to the rest of her family. She was also many miles from her hometown, Bergen-Balsen being in northern Germany, and her home in Poland. And she was just one of thousands of people in the same situation. A displaced persons camp was set up in Bergen-Balsen, in a former army camp which was now occupied by the British Army. It was an overwhelming situation for the former inmates and British Army to organise. Medical care was one of the first priorities. Food, hygiene, medical supplies all posed challenges and it was far from the only displaced persons camp. They had been set up by the Allies, Allies in Allied occupied areas of Germany, Austria and Italy, and conditions varied from camp to camp. Many survivors continued to live with food shortages in crowded, unhygienic conditions for many months, in some cases years after the end of the war. Because there was the question of what happened next to these people with no homes to go to. Toby remained at Bergen-Belsen Displaced Persons Camp for over two years after liberation. For Toby and other survivors, Bergen-Belsen Displaced Persons Camp became a temporary home, often for longer than they had planned. The committee of this camp was established immediately after liberation. 
it was the Central Committee of Liberated Jews in the British Zone. They became a political force, arguing that those who had nowhere to go should be able to emigrate to Israel. Many survivors had no homes left in Europe, and they did not always want to return to their hometowns, places that had so many memories of suffering. And of course, the end of the war, the liberation of the camps was not an end to anti-Semitism. And those who did try to return to their hometowns discovered this. In the camp, a police force was set up. Schools were set up for children, including nursery, primary and secondary school, and a yeshiva, which is a religious school for religious education. The camp even had its own newspaper. For the over 11,000 Jewish people with nowhere else to go, the displaced persons camp seems to have become a community. Toby Bieber got married there, and she was far from the only one. There was an average of 20 weddings a day in the first months after liberation. 2,000 children were born in the camp. Toby would stay in the camp until September 1947 when she and her husband Max were able to come to Britain. By this point, she had been reunited with two of her brothers, who are shown standing either side of her by the grave of her sister Sarah. The rest of her family had been murdered in the Holocaust. Since the war, Toby has gone on to dedicate much time and energy to Holocaust education. And we are so grateful for her donation of photographs to our museum. This wedding photograph encourages us to remember the horrors of the Holocaust that she had lived through. The difficulties survivors faced even after liberation and the incredible work survivors did to rebuild their lives and create hope for the future at a time when they were dealing with so much loss. At the Jewish Museum London, we are so grateful to all the Holocaust survivors who work with us in many different ways and help us to continue to tell these important stories. This year, our annual Holocaust Memorial Day event will be held virtually on Thursday, the 21st of January at 8 p.m. This is a free event. And if you would like to join us, do click on the link which is in the description for this video. Thank you so much for listening and joining me today. Do join us again next week for another object talk on the theme of hope. This one will take place on Holocaust Memorial Day itself. We will see you there.